Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Now in this one we're going to be taking a look at the development update that the team over at Indie Stone provided us for Project Zomboid on the 9th of June. In this blog we hear about upcoming additions and changes for patch 41.72. So if you find the video useful or informative be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel for more Zomboid guides, tips and info videos. So the blog post starts by addressing the developers plan for the release of the next patch. Now now the patch was due to release on the beta build of Project Zomboid on the 9th of June to coincide with the Thursdoid blog post, but unfortunately, due to some issues relating to vehicle gameplay that occurred during the playtesting, it had to be pushed back. Whilst we aren't given any exact dates, it does seem like it won't be long before we do get to try it out, however, once there's been another playtest or two. Probably the biggest addition in 41.72 that will affect every player is the new markers being added for those that you are grouped up with. So this is an optional feature that can be enabled at the start of a playthrough in the sandbox settings or by server owners in multiplayer. Essentially this feature will mean that you can see where any other survivors are on the map if they share a safe house or a faction with you. Whilst it might not seem like a major thing, how many times have you been talking with a friend and trying to figure out where they are based on their limited knowledge of the game itself? This is drastically going to help new players learn the ropes when being assisted by a friend and less of that repetitive cycle of dying over and over before they're able to find their new to the game buddy. Next up is an addition that again might not seem like a huge deal to the average player but I'll explain why it could be absolutely game changing on active multiplayer servers in the coming moments. There's a whole host of features to do with admin controls that are being added focused on making things simpler and avoiding the use of commands in favour of a simpler brush like system. There's a full video recorded by Aeteron of these features being used, which I'm playing some footage from now, but I'll also leave a link to the original blog post down in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. Essentially, this will allow admins to do things like start fires, place walls and tiles of different environments like water, trigger thunderstorms and more. Out of all of the features shown, the one that most excites me as a server owner is being able to place the tiles though. For those that don't know, a tile is essentially a single one by one block of ground that draws from the environmental assets the game uses. This will allow server owners to go as in-depth as we want with map creation. We can add little areas that will be used in server events which aren't usually on the map. Maybe we want to build a camp or a radio broadcast station or a makeshift medical facility in the middle of the woods. Who knows, the possibilities are pretty endless here and it's a great step for making multiplayer that much more replayable. Shameless self-plug here as well, our Patreon server usually does a server event with every wipe cycle that we do and we will definitely be using this tool to enhance them. You can find a link for the Patreon in the description if you'd like to come and join our existing players. So on to the next item. New loot maps have now been added to the game. Originally the team hadn't planned to do any loot maps for Louisville but there's now nine different maps in all which will not only give us loot to go and hunt down but will also progressively reveal portions of Louisville to the survivor that manages to find them. Just a small additional feature that will help anyone that's running mods with their playthroughs, there will now also be an improvement to the way errors are reported. There's a list of mods on the pause menu and if one of those is causing issues, we'll be able to see that mod highlighted in that list and this is going to be super handy if you need to remove whatever mod is causing those pesky red boxes to pop up in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, so if you've been enjoying the new audio from the likes of the guys at Formosa you UK, formerly Noiseworks, you'll be very pleased about this next one. So far the audio overhaul has worked in phases and just recently the team have had the meeting to kick off phase 3. The team at Formosa will be working on three main goals going forward. Firstly, improvement to how the sound system deals with multiple characters and sound priorities, specifically relating to multiplayer. Primary work in this area is to try and solve issues where sounds drop out due to clashes and priorities that occur when multiple players are around. The next goal is to expand the reactive music beyond action moments. Now right now, whenever we get into combat, the music will progressively shift to the combat variety from something a little less intense. The goal from here is for different music to trigger after certain events like looting a container, walking into a building, or many other small scale events. Now personally, I'm looking forward to this especially as someone that plays the game often, I would 
love to have a more diversified music score. Lastly, gameplay related sound effects. The example given here is modeling the realistic effects of using a firearm in enclosed spaces without ear protection. On top of that, improved sound from large crowds of zombies, sprinters, and bullet world impacts. So it's all really exciting stuff. So that's pretty much all of the heavy hitters for the recent update we've been given, but there is some other stuff. Firstly, popular modder Blair Al Gol has joined the Indie Stone team. Now, if you're unfamiliar with his work, this is the man behind the Toxic Fog mod, the Lab Complex Alpha mod, and the Terra Zeds mod. He stepped into the team to help with a buildup of bugs and minor, but somewhat time consuming issues. We also had a bit of a talk around a future overhaul that I know many will be looking forward to now that it's been mentioned. The UI in Project Zomboid is a hot point for discussion, with many people finding it not so impressive to look at and a bit clunky to manage. The team at the Indie Stone have always wanted to do something with this, but it's a daunting task as they mention in this blog update. They've had the chance to recently experiment with some AAA high-end UI tech middleware that will make the overhaul much easier and the results better. The team have been keeping this under their hats for the last few months, but now they feel it's safe to proceed after much, much testing. The following quote sums up the team's feeling on this one. So the next time you see someone moaning that the PZ UI isn't exactly glamorous, just tell them they know and it'll take a while, but they're working on it, which I think is some good advice. They do say it'll be a while before they talk about this again, but it's good to know that they've got the cogs turning on this one. That's it from me in this one, guys, but thank you very much for watching. And once again, you can find the link to this blog post in full in the description of the video if you want to give it a read. Special thank you to all of my existing patrons for their support and for joining us on the Project Zomboid server. I can't wait to get a handle on those new brush tools for some events for you guys. Thanks, folks, and I'll see you all in the next one.